So here on my test network, I've got two older 2012 servers running DHCP, and I've got two new Windows Server 22 servers ready to accept my new HA failover. The first thing I want to do is break the failover partnership between the two old 2012 servers. So you can see the first server that I'm on is indeed 2012, it's R2. I've got one scope configured on there, but it doesn't really matter if you've got multiple scopes. So the first command I'm going to use is get to DHCP server for failover. And that's the number four. And that should tell me that this server is replicating with 2012 DHCP2. It's in load balance 5050. But the most important bit is the actual name of the failover partnership, because we're going to need that name to remove the partnership. And the command to do that is remove DHCP server for replication. Sorry, server for failover. And then the name of the replication group. Now, I'm especially lazy, so I'm just going to copy and paste it out. Now it's important to know that the server that you execute this on is the server that keeps the DHCP. So this one is still a DHCP server. All we've done is removed the DHCP scope from the second server. So to tidy up, I'm going to jump over onto that second server and remove DHCP from it. Simply uninstall Windows feature DHCP. For the purpose of the video, I've sped this up quite dramatically. You also need to remove the administration tools that are associated with DHCP. So that's RSAT or Remote Server Administration Tool, DHCP, and remove those as well. And you can see it's already asking to reboot the server, so I'm just going to restart it. Obviously, if this is a production domain control or something, you might want to do the set of hours. But I don't have any users to upset on my test network here. So I'm jumping across now onto one of my new servers, the very first one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the DHCP Windows feature and the management tools. Not all sub features, it's include management tools. There we go. Again, for the sake of the video, I've sped this up. So that's installed successfully. Now there are a couple more hoops that you need to jump through. Um, I'm just using that netsh command there to add the relevant security groups in needed for DHCP. And every DHCP server needs to be authorized in Active Directory. So that's what this command is doing. I'll put all these commands on the website so you can copy and paste them out and the link will be below the video. The last thing that we need to do is, um, why didn't it like that? Oh, I know why. Uh, for some, I think it's a bit of a bug when you copy and paste long PowerShell commands and it removes the minor signs off the front of the flags. I've seen this quite a few times, so I know what it is. So I've copy and pasted the commands in and it's removed all the dashes on minus sides from in front of the switches. Uh, there should be one in front of value as well. So what this is doing is th this uh, stops the little yellow warning triangle when you open Server Manager that comes up and says you need to configure DHCP. What that does is in the registry it says don't bug you. There's no actual extra configuration to be done. We've done it and I've done exactly the same on the second 20 22 server and just to prove it's not smoke and mirrors if I get a horse name you'll see that this is uh, DHCP2 the second of the newer hosts so the next thing we're going to do is um, 
moves that replication to the second server. Now, before everybody emails me, I, I realize that you can export the, ser the um, config off one server and import it on the other one and then set it up. But I, I think it's more elegant to use the very technology that we are going to be setting up to migrate from 2012-2022. So I'm going to set a new replication partner between my last remaining 2012 server and my new 2022 server. That's the command there. So the source is 2012 and the target is 2022. It's, it's wrapped, <laughs> it's wrapped across the end there, but you, you can see if you look, uh, that's the name that I've given to the partnership. Again, it's load balancing. I've set it 50 50. If you want hot standby, um, then I, I'll put the commands for that on the website as well. And uh, I just have to click yes there because it's moaning about the clear text password going across. So let's prove that it's working. And you can see now that, yes, indeed, there is a new failover group. And the target is the 2022 server. Now, this may seem strange well, after we've just set it up. But the next thing we want to do is going to go across onto the 2022 server and delete the um, failover replication that we just set up. Now, remember, the server that you execute the commands on retains the config. So what this will do, and you see it's replicated across. So what this will do is remove the config from the 2022 server, and then all the DHCP scopes will live on the on the primary new 2022 DHCP server. So exactly the same as we did before. Get DHCP server for failover. And then because I'm executing the remove DHCP server for failover command on the 2022 server, that will retain the scope while removing the scope from its partner or the old 2012 server. Again, I'm feeling especially lazy, so I'm going to copy and paste that out. Glory to doing it this way is there's always a live DHCP server. Now I'm going to go back to the 2012 server I've just removed as a replication partner and I'm going to uninstall DHCP from there because I'm tidying up as I go along. You can of course do all this later, but as you can see, there's no scope on there. If you were to see a scope and hit refresh, you'd see it disappear. So although the role is still installed on there, the scope's been removed, so we're going to remove DHCP roll from the server. So this is simply uninstall Windows feature DHCP, the same as we did with 2012 DHCP-2 earlier on. And remember, we need to remove the admin tools for DHCP as well. And finally, as it's telling us, we're going to reboot this server as well. So that's all the DHCP now removed from the legacy servers. The last thing to do is set up our new high availability or load balancing DHCP replication link between the two new 2022 servers. So if I jump onto DHCP1, Move that out of the way, and let's just check. Yeah, it's done the same thing again. Look, it's it's removed a lot of the, it's it's put some of them in, and it's removed other ones. Let's go fix that. As I think this this is just a book. So the minor switch is missing off computer name, and our source is 2022 DCB one. That's correct. The switch is missing off partner server there, look. And the target is 2022 DHCP2. The switch is missing off name. And off load balance percent. And strangely, it, it's been included on the rest of the commandlets. Configure. 
Uh, also, it's carried through one of the quote marks off the end of the password. I don't particularly want that. Cool. Hopefully I've got this right. We'll find out in a minute. Cool. Don't forget to click yes. Because it's moaning about the ClearText password. And that will have set up a new HA partnership between your two 2022 servers. Which we can see if we run get DCP server failover again. You can see there that the partner server is the second 2022 server. We're in low balance mode and it's 50-50. I'll put the HA commands on the website if, if you want HA instead of that. So if I jump over onto DHCP2, you'll see there's the scope replicated to it. If you already had the tool over, you might need to click refresh like we did earlier. And that scope has come across with all its reservations and all its leases, etc. Obviously, it doesn't have a great deal of information in mind because it's on the test now. But that's just done. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell and share. It really helps the channel. And don't forget to come and visit us at www.pignetlive.com. Thanks very much.